Fag and Eant. My Lower Ability Maths class has recently been looking at calculations involving the circumference and diameter, but some don't understand the relationship. Can you suggest how I could introduce the concept of pi in an inspirational way? Thanks, Peter Barsby. It might surprise you, but the answer could lie in shopping. When introducing the idea of pi, it's a good idea to start off with something familiar. Now, shopping is about as familiar as you can get. In this shop, there are lots of things to help with teaching of pi, including a helpful store manager. Oh, yeah. oh, Got those thanks. bits for you. That's great. Brilliant. OK, um, right, if you could hold that for me. OK. And I'll take that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap the till roll around the container. Can we make a little mark there? Yeah. Then I take that piece of till roll and I just fold it along my mark, but make sure that I've got it absolutely square. And then, yeah, I'll cut that bit there. I'll cut it for you. Yeah, that's great. Thanks. There you go. And you cut that there. If you take this, and this is the bit that is the wow moment for everybody, um, if you take that, that's the diameter, so the widest part of the circle uh, yep. going through the centre. Um, if you take that and you fold it in about three, not exactly oh, three, yeah. and you see that it yeah. fits about three times. Three Actually, times. it's pi, it's, it's 3.14, blah, 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 the number goes on. Does that work on any size? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Have you got another ten? We can go and have a oh, little bigger thing. I've got a like. big one over here, actually. All oh, right, okay. Let's one. go and try that one. Yeah, that'd be great. All right. Oh, yeah, that's great. Right. How about if I hold it in this time and, and you do the? Um... Okay. Okay. This is a very visual way of introducing pi, and anyone can do it. Times. Slightly over. It's clever, isn't it? It is. That's, That's good, great. that. Excellent. That's great, thank you. We're off to Viner's School in Hillingdon to see Jackie Edwards using this approach with her foundation level pupils. She starts the lesson by making sure the pupils know the names associated with the circle. First of all, can you tell me any words that you would associate with the circle? Any word that you can think of? Any words, for example, I can think of one that begins with D. Diameter. Good, well done. Right, now that's one word we've got. It's uh, a year eight group and it's a foundation group and their uh, ability level would range between um, national level curriculum two and some of them actually have reached level four. What about the letter R? Rotation. Rotation is to do with uh, the circle, but it's not, uh, not the word I'm after, right? The word radius. Have we heard of radius before? Right. Now, there are other words that obviously we're going to have to learn this morning, OK? Now that I've got Jackie covers other parts of the circle, like the circumference, centre and segment. Okay. Using the interactive whiteboard, she gets the children to come up to the front and connect the words with the graphics. Any word you like. We've had the, white, so the interactive whiteboards since September uh, and we use them a lot in activities like that at the beginning of lessons. They're very used to doing that now. It's becoming very much interactive in all parts of the lessons where they will come up and uh, use the whiteboard and even draw on the whiteboard. What I'd like you to do now, if you look at what you've got on your table, we've got a set of tins, you've got some labels. We're going to see if we can discover something about two of the words. The two words we're concerned with will be the diameter and the circumference. Now we are going to investigate something special about those two. Now, Jackie carefully explains how to wrap the till roll around the can and cut it to the exact circumference. Now then, I want to you to experiment with this piece of paper, right? and see if you can see any relationship between the distance around the outside, the circumference, and the distance across the middle, the diameter. Okay? So do you want to get started? 
The pupils try this activity with three different size cans, small, medium and large. This physical activity of wrapping, cutting and folding is a more practical and involving way of beginning to investigate pie. It looks as though Charlie has gone beyond what Jackie has asked him to do. He's decided to cut the label into three equal pieces. Now, I did ask you to be looking at the uh, relationship between the, um, the label, the circumference, and the tin. Now, I could see as I was going round, Charlie has actually found something quite interesting. So Charlie, can you explain what you've done? Um, we uh, marked out the circumference of the... Um, piece of paper on the tin and it's three of these. Charlie's played right into, into my hands there. He's um, he sorted out something, especially with the number three. I mean, that was good on his behalf to actually have thought that out because that was no prompt from me at all. He had a, an absolutely um, magic moment there, yes. Now, you've worked on the circumference. We've now got to consider the diameter. <coughs> now, to, to find out the diameter, to be as accurate as we can, we could, if I take yours, um, Alfie, we could try and do it with a ruler just going across, but that's not going to be all that accurate. Jackie wants to improve their measuring skills, so she introduces this method using set squares and a ruler. Having measured the circumference and the diameter of the three different cans, they enter their results into a table. D is for diameter and C is for circumference. R stands for result, which hopefully will equate to the value of pi. Right, that's fine. From a table, we're looking for pattern. Is there a pattern in our results? Uh, Priya? And the circumference is bigger. How much bigger is the uh, circumference? The pupils aren't seeing the relationship immediately, so Jackie takes a slightly different tact. Suppose I had um, these figures here. Now there's a relationship between those numbers. There's a pattern there for sure. Um, Nikita? You've got to times three each time. You've got to multiply each time by three, that's right. Right, so there is a rule, that is a pattern, right, that Nikita has found. Now then, can you look at our numbers, the ones we've discovered this morning, and can you see um, a link between those numbers? I'll give you a clue. If you remember what Charlie did before, right, Charlie cut his circumference up, and what happened? What happened to his circumference when he put it across the diameter? How many diameters did he get out of his circumference? Callum? Three. Three? Jackie starts to build on this first step in understanding the relationship between the diameter and the circumference. What I'd like you to do, on your calculator, you're going to put in the uh, circumference first, Right, so in the first one you'll write, you've put in 16.5 and you'll divide by 5 and then write your answer in the results column this time. By doing these calculations, they find out for themselves that the diameter goes into the circumference three and a bit times. And then you divide it by 7.5. Three point four. 
No, the remainder of them are all different. Oh, but no, because it's remainder, isn't it? You don't count the remainder. It's 3.3. Divided by 10 equals 33. The remainder one. Actually, their results look pretty good. This works for every single circle. You can take the uh, diameter and it will wrap round your circle always. It's 3.142 is what we usually use, but it doesn't stop there. It certainly doesn't stop there. Pi is an irrational number. It goes on forever. Brilliant mathematicians have worked pi out to billions of places. 3.14159265358979323846264338327. You went up to London, say. Can you think of any circles that you would that would spring to mind? <coughs> Chloe. The Millennium Eye. There's the London Eye. The circumference for the London Eye is 424 metres in circumference. As I did with the shopping, Jackie looked for other practical and everyday examples to help the pupils understand Pi. They made real progress in this lesson. They weren't defeated by Pi, but they were defeated by one particular word. Um, I learnt diameter. Um, what's that word? I learned how to measure diameter and, uh, what's that word again? So I learned about the diameter and the, um, what's it, sir? Very difficult, isn't it? What's that word? Circumference. Circumference, yeah. Was it the, um, <laughs> I learned how to do the... Circumference. Yeah, the circumference. I think the result was three point. Was it Chris? When I divided the circumference by the diameter, I got three point one four. Three point one four. And what was that called? Uh, pi. I think the secret to making maths interesting is to use everyday objects that children can relate to. Jackie, in her lesson, introduced the London Eye. You could, perhaps, use the Ferris wheel from the local fair and do calculations on the radius and the circumference. There are lots of circular objects in the environment. Here's a couple for a start. They could measure the circumference of different trees and work out an estimate for the age of the tree. Jackie also gave them homework on the diameter and circumference of the Earth which might make them realise how enormous our world really is. Anyway, Peter, thanks very much for your letter. It certainly made me think. And I hope it's given you lots of ideas that you can use in your maths classroom.